We take a look at a lot of really crazy graphics cards, but this one right here we think is a hidden gem and we think Nvidia may not want you to know about it. This is an RTX A2000 laptop GPU that's in a desktop. And of course, when it comes to these graphics cards, it's never easy to get them up and running. But for $150, is it a good deal? We're about to find out. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of your unactivated Windows install on your gaming PC? Well, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, has you covered. GVG Mall is an online marketplace to gain access to really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, as we mentioned, Windows 10 licenses. It is incredibly easy to get your Windows 10 or 11 activation key from GVG Mall. Just use code TB20 to get a special discount, and then all you have to do is take that code, put it into Windows, and boom, you have an activated Windows copy. We have been working with GVG Mall for several years now, and we love the reliability of all the products they have to offer, so be sure to check the link in the description down below. Use code TB20 to save on your next purchase of a Windows key or other product from GVG Mall. So we picked up this graphics card for $150 on AliExpress, and it is an RTX A2000, but it's not what you think. It's not that low profile card that you can buy from a bunch of OEMs that is around $250 to $300. This is the laptop variant that comes with 8 gigs of VRAM and is in a modified, well, setting because it's being used in a desktop. And I think for the price point, it looks really cool, but there are some caveats. So since this is not an official NVIDIA GPU, hence the NVIDIA doesn't probably want you to know about this, this does have to have modified drivers, which means you're gonna be getting them from a not so credible source necessarily, and it makes this thing actually show up as a Frankenstein GPU in Windows. Yeah, very weird to see Frankenstein GPU, but since this is the laptop variant, we can give you the rundown of the main specs, and we're still gonna benchmark it with those drivers and just kind of talk about the, uh, well, pros and cons of going this route, and if for the price point, that trade-off is worth it. So this is an Ampere GPU, which comes with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It is eight nanometer, and it is a PCI 4.0 GPU. It comes with HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4. And according to this, it is 906 days old. You convert that to years. McAllister, you got this. But basically this laptop GPU is equal or if not a little bit better than a 3050 Ti mobile GPU. Um, so it's probably gonna be more like a 1660 super level card in terms of desktop performance, but we won't know that until we benchmark it. And we're gonna talk about this test bench real quick. Now to go over our test bench, we have the Ryzen 7 5700X eight core 16 thread cooled by a very nice 240 40 mil liquid cooler for all that cooling capacity. We have 32 gigs of PNY Accelerate 3600 megahertz RGB RAM, a one terabyte team group NVMe SSD. We have an Asus Tough B550 Micro ATX. We have an XPG 650 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. And then all of this is inside of a very nice deep cool case with lots of RGB fans that run very fast so we have good airflow. So now that we gave you guys the specs of the graphics card and the specs of our test bench, let's go ahead and bring it over to our benchmarking station. All right, guys, now that we have this RTX A2000 on our test bench, let's talk about how we got it working because that was kind of a complicated process and then dive into some benchmarks because they were pretty promising. Now, the big downside with this RTX A2000 is it's not a normal RTX A2000. It's actually a modified laptop GPU that has eight gigs of VRAM and is an RTX A2000 because it's a mobile RTX A2000. Very confusing, I know, but this is not what I thought initially when I bought this thing i thought we were just getting a somewhat modded version of the rtx a2000 which is a low profile card that is pretty pricey but this is not exactly that and because of that you cannot install normal nvidia drivers and that's probably going to be the well deal breaker for most of you guys is you can't install normal nvidia drivers because you have to install custom drivers but there is a resource out there called frankenstein drivers that is a community of people who made drivers specifically for these aliexpress gpus that you can install and get things up and running now you will need to follow some of the guides on there because there's some of the things that will make sure that anti-cheat doesn't freak out when it sees this modified driver. You're gonna make sure to do that. So do like a custom install and everything. But once you get the driver installed, it will work fine. Everything works okay, but you're not gonna get normal driver updates very easily. You're just kind of hoping for this community to continually put out driver updates. So at the price point, it's still a decent deal, but for most people, this is gonna be a major deal breaker and probably not worth it for you. But while we have this graphics card here let's see how it performs now first up in cyberpunk 1080p high settings with quality dlss we're gonna be getting an average of 72 fps a minimum of 52 and a max of 94 cyberpunk on high settings running at 60 plus fps 
pretty dang good. The normal RTX A2000 is similar to an RTX 3050, which this card feels much more like a 1660 Super than it does a 3050. Um, not nearly as powerful, but we are talking $150 for this really small compact card, single fan with all the white design and everything. So the performance is still really impressive. And as you can see from the wattage, we're barely pulling 60 watts under full load. So this thing is incredibly power efficient and makes a whole lot of sense for upgrading full-size office computers if you have a very low wattage power supply, which we will be doing here on the channel. So stay subscribed, by the way. We will be doing that here on the channel. But yeah, so far so good. It's running good in AAA titles at 1080p. Now let's dive into another AAA title, Far Cry 6, 1080p high settings, this time with no FSR or DLSS just to get the maximum performance out of this GPU. We got an average of 83, a max of 91, and a minimum of 76. Again, a game that is pretty demanding, but we're still getting really good results overall with this graphics card. And with our test bench, it pairs very well. We are getting Gen 4 support, so we're maximizing that GPU. And the fact that it does come with 8 gigs of VRAM versus 6 compared to the normal RTX A2000, it does give this graphics card an advantage in AAA titles that will eat up a decent amount of VRAM. Now let's dive into some live action gameplay with Apex Legends 1080p medium low settings. We got 120 FPS on average, but 144 at times. And honestly, those temperatures are what I really noticed when benchmarking this game. Very solid temperatures with the single fan design. It is a pretty low power card in terms of its power draw, so that does make sense. Uh, but the performance is good. High refresh rate Apex Legends. Now, if you're going to get this card and you're in another country or you just are someone like me who likes to buy really weird graphics cards for the fun of it, I would pair it with something like an 8th Gen i5, something in that realm. Maybe you can find a good deal on eBay or something along those lines. Or if you're going on the new market, an i3-12100F would work as well. But for $150 right now, it's still looking pretty good. But again, you can not forget about that driver thing. That's probably gonna be the biggest deal breaker for most average consumers. I really think this card is in the territory of, well, people who like to tinker with hardware rather than your average consumer looking to save a buck. If you want something that's kind of cool and fun to mess around with, but if you're just the average consumer trying to get the best frame rate possible for your money in Fortnite, it might not be worth considering. Next up is Warzone 2.0 on the balance preset 1080p with DLSS set quality. And we got 100 plus FPS. You could definitely stretch into 1440p with this graphics card using DLSS, but we're getting a good result overall 100 plus 90 at times when action does get a little bit crazy and rebirth it does dip into the 90s but i think that's more than playable and warzone is definitely one of those games that i would be worried a little bit about driver optimization considering we're using a modified driver we might not be getting the maximum performance out of this gpu and when new updates come with warzone there's normally game ready drivers from nvidia and amd so you might have to wait a little bit for that if you are going to use this with the modified drivers which is really your only choice now we decided to throw cs2 into the benchmark rotation high settings 1080p the main reason i did this is i wanted to test the issues with anti-cheat because if you don't do the modification when you install the drivers you'll have issues with anti-cheat not working not be able to play games online but it worked perfectly fine once you follow the guide on the frankenstein's gpu drivers website and we got 160 to 200 fps no problems whatsoever the gpu is paying close to 100 all the time so we're not really using the cpu but games like cs2 and other esports titles do tend to use your cpu so your mileage may vary depending on what kind of CPU you pair with this thing. And the same goes for the final game, Fortnite, 1080p medium settings. We went DX12 with quality TSR, and we actually got a 180 FPS average with 220 at times. Again, disclaimer, just like CS2, these games are very CPU dependent, so they're going to need a solid CPU to get these numbers, but it doesn't mean that the graphics card is doing nothing. It's still getting really good results overall. So, Hey, RTX A2000, it's not really an A2000, it's a laptop A2000 with 8 gigs of VRAM slapped on a PCB. It's your typical AliExpress special, but I think the modified drivers are what are going to kill this value, and I just really wish NVIDIA would allow these to exist and just let you take a laptop driver and have it work out of the box. But the downside is, and I do understand from NVIDIA's point of view, they don't really want these graphics cards to exist. But it is still cool to see that you can get it to work, especially if you're in another country and you don't want to spend probably three, dollars $400 for an equivalent level graphics card. You get one of these, add the modified drivers, and you'll be off to the races was a great gaming experience. So very interesting graphics card and very interesting video overall. Haven't dove into the modded driver section of the internet yet, and I got into that, and it was kind of interesting to see how that works. But yeah, interesting card. Let's go and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick.
Okay guys, we just got done benchmarking our GPU in the test bench. We pretty much think that this graphics card may be for really specific users, but because this thing kind of compares near a GTX 1660 Super or 1660 Ti, you can get those used on eBay for a little over $100 typically, and it may be better to go that route. Yeah, the only real benefit is you're getting RTX, which you get DLSS support, but uh, it's not really a great trade-off in my opinion, especially for the price point. Or if you're in another country, I guess that's the only reason you would go this route and use the modified drive if there's just not a good used market on those 16 series cards, but still an interesting card. And if you want to take a look at it, check the link's description down below. They will be affiliate links. They will help us out. Once again, big disclaimer here. We're using modified drivers. Be sure to check your source. We'll link the one that we use down below, but do be careful again, because we just downloaded it from this place because it's a community driver. Who knows what's actually included in it, but we got it working for you guys. So buyer beware and let us know what you think of using modified drivers in the comment section down below. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other to YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one goodbye so this graphics card will probably go into PC Bros build with a nice little disclaimer as far as the graphics go, but that means it will be really cheap, and we have all kinds of really crazy deals featuring pieces of hardware like this. PC Bros. Tag. We sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and as we mentioned, PC stuff that we feature here on the channel. If you use code Toasty Bros to check out, you'll save two percent your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.